it's cool when you're outside of the body because you can be gigantic. You can be the size of solar systems, but you can also be microscopic. And his robe, the fibers that were woven together, when you zoom in on them, because you can zoom in, it's, it's crazy how it works outside of the body, but you can zoom in. And when I zoomed in and each little fiber was all of creation, it was all of life. He was wearing it on his robe. He had it woven into the fabric of his robe. I'm so happy to have Chad Foster with me today. Chad, welcome to the channel. I am so happy to have you. I think we've been trying to get together to do this podcast for about six months since I first started my channel. So this is really exciting for me to have you finally on. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And you had a near death experience and a very unique experience intertwined within that near death experience, something like I've never heard before. And it actually happened right there in the room that you're in. Yes, ma'am. Tell me what happened. Well, it all started I was using a drug to my knowledge was ecstasy and for about a week or two before my experience happened i kept having two words pop into my mind what's next and i didn't understand what these words meant i didn't understand the voice that they because it didn't sound like me i didn't know where these these two words were coming from what they meant or anything and i had gotten COVID and gotten sick. So I decided to isolate myself in this room from, from everybody else. And while I'm sick, I still use this drug. And I had found myself awake for roughly five to six days and I hadn't had anything to eat or drink. So it was kind of like a fast, but sped up because I was adding no sleep to it and narcotics. And from what I could understand, this is what my soul eventually told me, is that in my body's dying state, its weakened state, my soul was able to expand my consciousness to where I would be able to understand what was about to happen. And sitting in this floor against the wall, these two words, what's next, I figured out was me, me questioning what's next after we die. Well, I'm dead. What's next? And I found out my soul, that is me, I came out of my body and I floated to the right of, of my body. And I'm seeing through two sets of eyes at the same time. I'm on, I'm my body looking at my soul. And I'm also my soul looking at my body sitting in the floor. And the whole time I, I couldn't, I couldn't comprehend it. It was kind of hard to comprehend it in my physical body. But my soul was communicating directly with my brain and what my soul did to help kind of put my body at ease is it formed my face on it. And my soul was a warm white light with a thin, warm, golden light surrounding it. And I've always called that 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 thin golden light my halo. I just always that's what I've called it. And it formed my face on it and the face was smiling. The mouth never moved, but it was smiling. And it was communicating directly with my brain, telling me what was about to happen. And my soul told me, don't be afraid. I'll be right back. And everything's going to be okay. And as my soul, I looked up at the ceiling and I flew straight through it and I went to space. And when I went to space, I didn't see anything else. I seen stars in the distance, but the main thing that drew my attention was a big round light that was the same color as my soul. And I flew next to it and it was just something that drew me into it. So I merged with it. And when I merged with it, everything went white and it was the strongest, warmest love that I've ever felt. The way I describe it is humans do not even have a way to describe how powerful, warm, and loving that love is. It is undescribable. And while I'm in this light, I'm, I'm formless. These two words hit me while I'm in this light. What's next? And I remember opening my eyes and I'm still in this light. And 
I took the form of my body here on earth because from what I understood, what I was told is it would be, um, I wouldn't question what am I doing? What is this space I'm in? What is my form? It was going to be more comfortable for me to not question things that I didn't need to question at that time. So I took my body's form. And I remember he walked over from the right side of me. And I could feel a, feel a presence. And I turned and looked, and he walked from the right side. And I immediately knew him as God. He spoke to me telepathically. He smiled the whole time. I had ringing in my ear. He spoke to me the whole time, but his mouth never moved. It was all telepathic. And... He introduced himself as God, the creator, the creator of all creation. And he looks like your typical picture of God, a cream colored robe tied with rope, sandals, long white beard, long white hair. And I have said this in other videos and, and everybody's always, well, that's not what my God looks like or my deity. That's not, I have to go into detail about God. Because God was not one. God appears to you in a way that you will not question God. So if you believe in Jesus, when you have your near-death experience, you see Jesus. If you believe in God, you see God. If you believe in Buddha, you see Buddha. God appears to you in whatever deity that you would see that would not make you question. Without a doubt, I am seeing my God right now. This is my God. That's how God comes to you because God created everything. Therefore, every deity is a part of God, just in a different form. And, but his robe, the cream colored robe, it's cool when you're outside of the body because you can be gigantic. You can be the size of solar systems, but you can also be microscopic. And his robe, the fibers that were woven together, when you zoom in on them, because you can zoom in, it's, it's crazy how it works outside of the body, but you can zoom in. And when I zoomed in and each little fiber was all of creation, it was all of life. He was wearing it on his robe. He had it woven into the fabric of his robe. It was amazing. I, I It's still to this day, three years later, it's kind of hard to comprehend some of the stuff I went through and I'm still learning. It's still a learning process. I listened to a piece of one thing Dolores Cannon had, the three ways of volunteers. And she said every time she would put these people in hypnosis, she would get a piece of the puzzle. I immediately stopped watching them and never watched any other ones because that's exactly what I was shown. But I wasn't given a puzzle piece. I was given the entire puzzle put together. But my job, each puzzle has a shape and each puzzle has a picture. But I don't understand why this puzzle piece and this picture with this shapes on it fit to these other ones to make this grand design. So my job is to take it apart piece by piece and understand this picture on this puzzle and the shape of it and why it fits to the rest of it to make this beautiful picture. That's been my job is to tear it apart and understand how it works so I can teach it. And that's what I'm trying to do step by step and slowly. A slow process but i'm i'm evolving but when i met god and he's communicating with me telepathically and he's telling me i have to send you to this body um you're afraid to die you're afraid to die because you don't believe in anything and that that's what it was i was afraid to die because i didn't believe in god Days before I had my experience, <clears throat> I told my mom, God's not real. God does not exist. If God's real, why does he let babies get cancer? Why does he let all these traumatic things happen? If God's real and he's supposed to be all loving, why do these bad things happen? And uh, I didn't believe in God. I questioned. And days later, God showed up. And I understood why these bad things have to happen. It's to grow spiritually. It's for your soul to grow and evolve. And I've said this in videos. I know a lot of people spiritually or, or religiously like to talk about the good things. Don't get me wrong. I love talking about the good things. 
So for a soul to evolve spiritually, for a soul to evolve, if I had good blessings my entire life and then I died, would I evolve that way? I could evolve, and that's part of it if that's my journey. But you have to look at it from this point of view. There is also souls here that are having completely different lives, traumatic experiences. What does those lives serve a purpose? Well, those, every soul is a fractal of a bigger soul. We're all connected. Everything is connected. So for you to evolve, it's all about the physical experience. So some people say time doesn't exist. And when I had my experience, I seen a million years ago and a million years from now, all existing in this current moment. Science calls it the multiverse. Religion maybe call it the reincarnation cycle. That's what I originally seen it was, was the reincarnation cycle. And even that serves a purpose. Time doesn't exist outside of this form. But in physical matter, time serves a purpose. You have to have time for things to grow. You plant the seed today. In a week, it blooms. In a month, it grows, blossoms. Time plays a part to create change, whether it's negative change or positive change. But positive change is what creates progress. Negative change is what intends the system has to restart, retry again. So for all these lives, even the bad things, they play a part in the soul's evolution. You have to have these traumatic experiences and go through these traumatic experiences to learn how to evolve from them, to learn how to get past them, to move, to move on from them. Some people say that their past lives, some traumas were so bad that it, it had bled over into these lives and maybe it's something that they're not dealing with from a past life they can't get over. That is a possibility. It is a very real possibility that you could have some trauma that was so bad in your past life that you just couldn't let go that now it's creating a fear in this life. And that is what's holding you back because you cannot move past that fear. That fear is, is holding you back from reaching your true potential. So everything plays a purpose. But I'll carry on with my experience. And... When we came out of this light, because we eventually started to walk, walk out of this light, me and God, the creator. But I seen these pillars. They looked, they were round pillars. And we were walking in space, by the way, which was really cool because you think there's no gravity in space. How could that be possible? Well, every time that I seen my foot and I would step down and feel resistance, I was creating that resistance in space that's how i was able to walk in space by creating a resistance between the molecules of my foot and space somehow i still i still don't understand it exactly but that's how it was working i was creating resistance and um but i seen these pillars and it looked like they were wrapped in river stone and where the mortar would be in between them looked like magma and I heard screaming coming from inside the pillars. And I remember looking at God. And I wanted to know. I was curious what was in these pillars. And he told me, look. Look. And I remember shrinking down yet again and going into the mortar. And there were cliffs on both sides. Everything, it was hot, but I didn't see fire. But everything was a red-orange color. And there were cliffs on both sides with edges. There was an edge here and an edge here. And I remember seeing a woman on one side and a man on the other side. And the man was sitting there holding his head, rocking and screaming. And the woman was like pacing back and forth, screaming. And I wanted to know what was going on. And God told me that when you imagine heaven or hell, this is their hell. They're creating hell for themselves. Something that they were going through in their life, they could not get past. So what heaven or hell is, you create it. You can create your own heaven or your own hell. It depends on what you believe with your soul. Because we were created with free will. Which means whatever we believe happens to us after we die. 
The one that created us loves us so much and respects our free will so much that he will allow you to experience it. Why? Because that's what you believe you will experience. So if you believe in heaven, you experience heaven. If you believe in hell, you experience hell. If you believe in nothing, even that you will experience because that's what you believed will happen. So, but yet, there's still the next day. After you experience these things, you still go on. You still carry on. But that was just, that was just, I thought that was very amazing to me that that happened. Because considering I didn't believe in God, heaven, hell, or none of this. But here I am seeing pillars and the people that are in it are in a meta, a, 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 a hell type situation but they could look across this woman and this man could have looked across and seen each other but they never they were so caught up in whatever they were creating that they would never see each other they were terrorizing their own selves and it, it was hard to imagine that a soul would do that to their self but yet even that serves a purpose and so we came out of this light and one thing i did when i went into the other reality it was a parallel dimension in the multiverse so there's this earth we're on now and picture the earth and an infinite row back behind it is an earth that exactly the same thing here is going on in an infinite state in an infinite state, everything that's happening here is happening there. But it's all a part of the multiverse or the reincarnation cycle or incarnation cycle. It's all pretty much the same thing, just worded different. And there was a body on one of these earths that the whole reason it exists was for my soul to physically inhabit it at the time of my near-death experience to have a brain aneurysm burst to where I could die and I got to watch the entire death of the body. I got to watch my body do a death stretch. I got to see my body be found. I got to watch all the way until the body was unseen. That body was buried. But not only that, I got to go into people. Everyone that I've ever had contact with, I've got to go into them and feel their emotions, even hear their thoughts. And my son was, I think, three at the time. And when I went into him and felt the sadness that was in him, I caved. I broke. It it broke me because it was that sadness was a true true definition of that emotion of sadness. What what it is for to be three and feel that sad over you're not even fully comprehending what is going on at three years old. But that sadness, it was the purest I've ever felt. It was pure. And it, it broke me. I, I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't want to feel any more any any other one's emotions. I couldn't do it. And I had to anyways. I understand that now. I had to keep going because that was part of the process. But once I seen that body buried, I got to go on to the next step. And I went back in time and I seen it was just like it was real life, but almost like a still picture. And I remember it was just a beautiful landscape with a long neck dinosaur. I can remember that. And I was standing beside of it with my hand on its hip, on its rear hip. And at the time, it kind of confused me because I'm like, what, what, what is the purpose of this? Why am I seeing a dinosaur with my hand on its hip? I don't understand this, but I've come to understand now that that was the first time that my soul was physically incarnated in a physical form was in that dinosaur. And because people, humans might not believe this or not. Your body can be one age. My body is 33 years old. But people don't, they don't comprehend that even in the Bible or multiple different religions, 
you were alive before you were in physical form. So, but what gives your soul age is physical incarnation because it ages. So outside of physical form, there is no age because past, present, and future all exist at once. But when you physically incarnate, every second, minute, hour, day, week, month, year that goes by, that ages your soul. So my body is 33, but what I understood is my soul's age is, is hundreds of millions of years old. I've been dying and living and dying and living for as long as dinosaurs has been here from what I understand. And that was my first physical body's incarnation. And it just sometimes it's overwhelming to me considering some of the things that come to me. I've, I've been researching this for three years. I have so many books. I've watched so many videos. I've done so much research on near death experiences and I have yet to find one like me. I have yet to find, I mean, there probably is, there probably is thousands like me out there, but I've yet to find one like me. And it, it, it gets kind of, it gets kind of, I don't know. It gets to me sometimes because I do want to talk about these things with somebody. But it's hard to talk about to most people because most of the people that I've known when I first had my experience and would try to talk to them, they didn't believe it. They wanted to chalk it up as, oh, you're, you were just high. You were a drug addict or you're crazy. That can't be possible. And I would love to have somebody to talk to about these things because I do believe it's real. And up until I started researching, I thought I was crazy. I thought I was losing my mind. I'm the, I'm the only, I don't, don't even believe in this. But yet here I'm finding hundreds of thousands of people who had very similar experiences that I have. And that is, that is just bewildering to me that not only humans separated by thousands of miles, but thousands of years have talked about almost the exact same thing. Because it's not only in our culture and our civilization now. This has been talked about in ancient cultures and ancient civilizations thousands of years ago. Everything that I've been researched, they, they believed in the soul so much that they carved it into stone. They believed in God so much that they built monuments dedicated to God or gods. That's how much they had faith and belief in something that normally people say they can't see hear feel or anything like that but you have to pay attention if you if you quiet your mind you can hear god you can see god in everything you do you can feel god everywhere god is in everything everything was created from god everything comes from god everything so there is not anything that is separate from god but when you come into a physical form you create division between left and right that's where the separation comes from. It's a human condition, not a spiritual condition. Humans create that separation. But it plays a role. It all has to do with trying to lift that veil, trying to bring back remembrance, trying to evolve. And this species is on a brink right now to where I believe the reason so many people are having near-death experiences or out-of-body experiences or spiritual, uh, spiritual awakenings is because this planet needs the the humans on it need a kickstart. They've been so long, thousands of years now, that we've been mass manipulated or lied to, and all this has been hidden from us. That so many more are having these experiences now to try to awaken people, to try to awaken the souls back to where they had power. Because I believe that humans at one point in time had more power than what we have now. But we've been lied to for so long that we humans started to believe it. So as soon as you came into a body, boom, from your past life, you were already conditioned. You were already conditioned to believe a certain way. 
and it carried over with you into this life. And it's kept on doing that generation after generation after generation. And, but when I seen these pillars and seen hell, I never seen heaven. I never seen anything that was similar to heaven. But, and I didn't, I never seen, I never seen, um, besides the dinosaur, I never seen any other animals. I never seen relatives, anything like that. I, I never seen those. I never seen anybody else but God during this experience. And after I seen that dinosaur, um, and understood that, that was my first life's physical incarnation i was able to see two other lives that i had a problem with the death and i don't know if i can say this because one of them i was a little girl and something traumatic happened i don't know if i can say that on here we'll just leave it at that something traumatic happened okay. something traumatic happened and um and I could not get past that death. It was so traumatizing to have that happen that I could not get past it. And there was another death where I was a probably early 20s male. And I remember Roman Red. Uh, I remember Shields. And I remember it was in the desert. But there was like a city off in the distance. But... Uh, and I was put in an iron bull and I was burned alive. And that explained so much why I was terrified of fire. Because for the longest time, I was terrified of fire here. And seeing that death kind of explained that's where the fear came from. Was that experience, that traumatic death and why I fear fire here was because of that. And I finally let that go. Even spiders. I had a fear of spiders. And my near-death experience, I, I can let spiders crawl on me. They don't bother me. You know, it, they just don't. It's just a part of nature. They're beautiful. I don't care how poisonous they are. They're beautiful. And, um, but that was, that was, I just wanted to throw that out there because it, it's one of them things that, Sometimes your fears don't stem from something you've went through as a child or a young teen. It, it is very possible. I'm not saying every experience, but it is possible that whatever you're afraid of carried on from a life prior. It was just so traumatizing to you that you did not know how to deal with it at the time. It shocked you and you carried it on with you here to try to learn how to deal with it here. But... I, that, that's kind of one of them things that I understand why that has to happen. But if this is a whole new life, then it should be a whole new experience. And, and sometimes it can be. There's so much to this near-death experience and out-of-body experience in the multiverse. When you connect with the multiverse and you can see how many realities there actually are, it's mind-blowing to, to try to comprehend what humans think are possible here. Well, once you're outside of this form and you see what's actually possible, and then you try to come back to a human form, there's a reason why a lot of that information gets immediately cut off because it's too much to handle for a human condition. It's You cannot understand something that's un, not understandable where humans are in current evolution, where our brains are, where our hearts are, the way we think about things. You cannot understand these things quite yet. And that's what happened to me when I had my near-death experience. When I actually died in that body and released and the tether broke. and Because the way I said it is, I don't have a rubber band. But picture, this is your soul. This is your body. They're one. When you have a near-death experience, there's a rubber band around these two. When you have a near-death experience, your soul leaves your body. And it keeps going and going and going. But you can only get so far before that rubber band tension pulls back. But when your body dies, the brain stops, the heart stops, then there is no tether. 
you connect, you can go as far as you want to connect to anything. It's all immediately right there in that, in that death. It's all there. And I had connection to it all. But as soon as I came back to this body, I could have spoke at this word for word. That's why I did want to write this down. But as soon as I moved, it's like a brick wall was put up. I was told, no, you're not allowed to have this here. For one, where I was at the time, not understanding how any of this worked, there was a lot of power in some of this knowledge, a lot of power. There are other entities here that have been on earth since the creation of life, going through life on this planet, trying to manipulate life, trying to corrupt life. And I know a lot of people will call me crazy when I talk about extraterrestrials, but I'm a firm believer in them because I've seen two different species during my near-death experience. The first one was standing in the doorway back behind me. And when I say... A reptilian, that's what this looked like. It looked like a humanoid lizard. But it was it was see-through. I could see through it. And I didn't understand at the time what was going on. But it's God was giving me like a script, was reading it to me. This is what's happening. This is what these entities do. This is their purpose. And this is how to fight them. Okay, so what's happening? I can see I called them lizard pricks since day one. That's just what I've called them. He's standing in the doorway with his arms out, stretched out, pointed at me. And I ask, what are they doing? What is he doing? And what he's doing is they have been negative for so long. And your soul is pure positive power. So what they do is they feed you energy, frequency, and vibration, and a thought, a seed. They plant it in your mind. If you act on that seed, it's like any other seed you plant in the dirt. You plant it in the dirt, you water it, it starts to blossom, you start to prune it, take care of it. Well, it eventually grows into reality from a seed. That's what the seed is that they plant in you. If you act on it, this negative impulse, this negative thought, this intrusive thought that they plant in your brain, you are no longer creating a reality in your image. You're creating a reality in their image, which is a negative reality. But even that serves a purpose. Um, but I could see through them, and I, I was just curious why that was. Why is he not solid? He's like a ghost. And what I understood is he was a projected consciousness. We know it as ESP, remote viewing, uh, things like this. But this species has learned how to do it not only on Earth or even to other realities. They can do it over vast distances, uh, vast, vast distances, even into other dimensions and other realities. But this species is not only here in uh, consciousness. They are here in physical form. They have been on this Earth since life began going through trying to manipulate life. And the purpose of that is they want God's power. They want to feed off your soul. They get, if you create a reality in their image, they feed off of it. They feed off of it because you're using your pure positive power to create a reality in their image. But eventually, if they keep doing this long enough, because I've seen two different ones that were trying to follow me, after my experience, they followed me around my house for several days, trying to influence me, but I could see them. And I told them it's not going to work anymore. I, I know that you're here. I know what you're doing. I don't want any part of it. If it doesn't come from God, and I, I know the difference now, if it doesn't come from God, I don't want it. And that's how I figured out that I was a channel. And how my channel works is when there is a soul here, on this planet, in this reality, that asks me a question. If you are the right soul, and the time is right, and the question is right, it gets passed through me, and then I can channel the answer. Because if you know about the Akashic Records, every answer that it, for any question that can ever exist or will exist, every answer already exists. 
But the question has to come into existence first. Then the answer can then be released. The question has to come into existence to make the invisible answer visible. And that's what I do. So if somebody asks me a question, if it's right for you, the time is right, the answer can be released. But if it's not the right time for you to know, or you're not the right soul, or it is even worded different, I'm not even allowed to know. I'm told that I can't tell you, and I don't even get to know the answer, because it's not for me. I'm just a channel. I'm just like a, a dam to a spillway. You know, some God opens the channel. I never force it open. I was told to not force the channel open, because if I do, if God opens it, I know exactly who's coming through the channel. But if I force my channel open, there is no telling what is on the other side of the door. There is no telling what I will allow to come through. How do you get to the sheep? You're a wolf. You dress in sheep's clothing. That's how you infiltrate them. It could be pretending to be God. But I know if God opens it, only God has that power. Nothing else does. And that was the entity that I seen here during this experience. But when I went outside on the porch, I seen, it looked like a shard of glass, but it was about 20 to 30 foot tall. And it was needle thin, slightly angled and rotating. And it looked like it had a rainbow inside of it. And it was a little bit off the ground. And I understand now that it was some kind of portal. And when people talk about little gray aliens, they were coming out of this shard. This needle thin shard. Somehow they were coming out of it. There was one in my yard. There was one in the street. And there was one at the street corner from my house. And the first ones I seen were in the front yard. I couldn't see their feet. I remember seeing their hands, their faces, and their bodies. And they're, they had some kind of uniform on. When, when I say like a like Star Trek, like a, like a skin-tight uniform, they had some kind of skin-tight uniform on. No helmets or anything. But they were also talking telepathically. And they just walked out of the portal just like nothing happened. And we're standing in the front yard. And the first one that seen me, he said telepathically to the other ones, he can see us. And I'm, I'm, these are aliens, but they're speaking telepathically in English. I make that make sense to me. How are these extraterrestrials speaking English right now? But better yet there, I'm seeing little gray aliens in my front yard. I don't, I don't understand this. Well, when it comes telepathically, whatever language you speak, so they might not speak English. So when they speak to each other, they hear whatever language they speak. But because my dominant language is English, when you hear somebody telepathically, it doesn't matter if they speak German, you hear English. You hear what language you understand. That way, it's understood because if you're speaking telepathically for one, then you're gifted to begin with. So if you're able to hear people's thoughts or hear, feel emotion or even finish somebody's sentences, there's a reason why you hear it in whatever language you dominantly speak or, or feel what you feel. And it's so that you can understand it, your soul can understand what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what you're hearing. And um, um, I seen three of them come out of that shard. And wherever they went, it's almost like they were telling other ones that I could see them. Because they went back in and two more would come out. And they would look directly at me and be, oh, he can see us. And they would go back into that shard. And that was pretty much it when it comes to them. It was like um, some of this, some people describe their experiences very vividly. But maybe it was lack of sleep or the body's dying state. But some things are very vivid. But then 
the reason I have wanted to go to like uh, ayahuasca retreats or uh, other things like that is because there are a lot of things that just are black that that I don't have any recollection of. Like what happened after that, I do not know. I don't understand what happened after that. I, I'm I don't don't know. These encounters with the reptilian being and the, the little gray guys, those that, that was during your near death experience. The the reptilian was right after, like right after my soul came back into physical form, that's when I seen him in the floor. And the little gray aliens was later that night when I got up and walked outside, that's when I seen them. Oh, so I wonder if you were still kind of like disengaged, not fully in integrated in your body. Do you think that's why? I do think that's why, because at the time, uh, my son in this room had, um, it, it was a toy and also the clothes hangers. I noticed it with his toy and the clothes hangers, but his toy, you know how they, when you spin something and you can see this, it's one thing, but you can see multiple different, multiple different angles from it. That's how his toy looked and the clothes hangers. They were tilting back and forth very slowly, but it's like there were multiple, the same one layered multiple. And I, I couldn't, I, the only thing that I could think logical, the reason I'm seeing that is because I'm dying. That's, that's immediately what I thought is my brain is dying. I need sleep. And, uh, but it is to me, knowing what I know now is very possible that my body was in such an altered state that I was seeing multiple different realities bleeding into one. To me, that is a very real possibility because I know now that I don't, it doesn't matter what I think is impossible. I know for a fact, nothing is impossible. If you can think it, see it, hear it, feel it, you can do anything. Yeah. I feel like, it's similar to, well, I've had many out-of-body experiences, and sometimes when you come back into your body, mm -hmm. there's like a sink lapse. It's not completely synced, and if you walk or something, it kind of feels like you're shadowing your body, like you're just slightly out of sync, not completely in the body, and you can see kind of things like what you were talking about, like with the the hangers and the toy and stuff. I have never seen an alien being or anything like that, but that is really fascinating that you That's were right. in between. You were like in an in-between area where that was accessible to you. Yes, ma'am. And I found a way to connect to it. And it's, it's hard to believe, but the, the way that I do it is I think of this. Okay, there's, there's things from the Bible that says, He who believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Well, I think about time and how it exists. I'm alive now, but one day my body will be dead. And my soul will still be alive. So I do it like this. I'm already dead. I'm already dead. And it's e almost instantly I can connect. It's like I have one foot in the land of the living and one foot in the land of the dead. And sometimes it, it depends on the moon cycle. It depends on the moon cycle. A lot of my information comes during the moon cycle. I don't know why the moon cycle, it has nothing to do with the sun, but most of the time the moon, depending on its position in the sky and the shape of the moon depends on, I can feel the channel open. It is so strong. And even if I have nothing to talk about, it's almost, I have to record this. There's something I have to say. I don't know what I'm going to say, but I have to say it. And I've recorded lots of videos and, and, and talked about, uh, I can't even remember what I talked about, but it, it's, it just comes through me. It, it's, uh, just instant channeling of knowledge. What do you think the moon is? Is it something other than what we've been taught? I'm not positive. I mean, I, I, I actually think I've said this on other videos, you know, cause I believe in globe earth, but I know there's a lot of people that believe in flat earth. 
And one thing I will never do to any soul is tell a soul they're wrong. I will never tell anybody they're wrong because your reality, even though we are on the same earth, your reality is different than mine. So whatever your soul is creating in your reality, that's what is real in your reality. And there's, there's a reason for that. So whatever you believe in your reality is real in your reality, and you will create it in your reality because that's what you believe. That's what your soul says, I want to experience. I want to experience this. So that's what is created for you. Now, when it comes to the moon, I believe it to be just the moon. But, I mean, I also believe it is a living entity. Uh, I believe it serves a purpose and uh, it's not just some rock that crashed into the earth billions of years ago and formed the moon. It's a living entity and serves a purpose for mother earth. It serves a purpose for our solar system, for the galaxy. Uh, everything is connected. It's not separate from us. We're not separate from the moon. It's not separate from our solar system or our universe. It plays a part no matter how small you might think it is. One grain of sand is small, but if you get enough of them, they make an entire beach. And that is all one beach together. It's not one grain of sand and then another grain of sand. It's one massive beach all working in unison. I had an out-of-body experience one time where I saw the moon was a camera and it was recording everything. And when I looked out the window at it, it focused on me. I could see it like focusing right on me. Wow. I think it's the moon is very interesting to say the least. Yes. But take me back to your near death experience and yes. tell me how this kind of wrapped up for you. How did you come back to your body? Were were you told that you had to go back or or what? Yes, it's it's now this is the crazy part and and sometimes it, it still kind of twists my mind up to think about it because during all of this while my while I am my soul flying through space, traveling with God, going into other lives, I can still see out of my body sitting in this floor the entire time. I'm sitting in this floor. And in this body, in this room, this experience, I can't remember, it, it, 30 to 45 minutes is all it took. But for how long I was outside of my body was hundreds of millions of years. I was outside of my body for hundreds of millions of years and went through that much time in 30 to 45 minutes here, which I could not comprehend. How is this possible? But it's, it just operates different there. Time doesn't operate the same. You can stop time, speed up time, reverse time, go to parallel dimensions. You can do anything you want to outside of this body if you know how, but all if it's with permission, everything you're not in control when we're in a human form the ego your body your brain you that makes you you here in human form thinks you're in control but everything that has ever been said or will be said or done or will be done has to have permission it has to have permission to happen and that's when you come to terms with god what i call god the creator some people might call god all might call god mind um um you know, whatever, however people want to call God. But God does not have one name because all names belong to God. Everything comes from God. God does not, he is not male nor female. God is male and female and much more. He is not one race. God is all race. I call God he and I describe God the way I describe God is because that's how God appeared to me to make, to, to make me believe and, and know that's who I'm talking to. That's who I'm experiencing is the creator of all of creation. That's who I'm seeing. And, but I also believe in multiple gods, but at, they have ranks like military. There is God, the one God, the true God above all gods. And each God serves a purpose, a God of the earth, a God of the goddess of the moon, a uh, God of the water, God, God of the dark, God of light. There is gods for every single thing that happens. But they, they serve a role when it comes to duality. Um, but yeah, my near-death experience, I was told that the reason that I had the near-death experience in the first place is because 
I had been going through this life, this same life in this reincarnation cycle or incarnation cycle over and over and over again. And I haven't been learning. I've been doing the same errors, getting it wrong, not getting back to source, not remembering. And I was so lost. I didn't believe. I didn't believe anymore. I was lost. I was gone. Or I thought I was gone. And my soul took advantage of my body being in the weakened state that it was in and wanted to help me. That's what my soul told my body is that I'm going to leave to get help, to help you remember. And that's what I was also told is the reason that I was given the puzzle and told to dissect this puzzle and to study all these magnificent books and to study all these other people's because I have yet to watch anyone else's full near-death experience story. No one's. No one's. I have read bits and parts or studied bits and parts here, but I'm told specifically that I cannot yet divulge into anyone's full story. I have to tell my story. Um, and it's not because I think that people might think that I'm copying other people or anything like that. No, it doesn't have anything to do with that. I mean, if people think that, they can think that. You have your your own opinions if you want to. But the reason I need to tell my story is because I don't need to cloud um, my experience. It, it is possible that it could cloud my experience and I could get confused because I'm still human after all. I'm a soul having a human experience. But my human body and my soul still have those battles every now and again. Um, so I do want to be spiritual and I am spiritual but I still have human error that I'm and still things in my, my life that I need to work on. And because of those things, it creates like a civil war inside of me. And so sometimes I am very spiritual and very connected to source and know instantly what to say without thinking about it. I just instantly know what to say. But then other times I'm at a loss and it's because of, I think my ego and my physical self are in more, more control of my emotions at those points, because I was shown that emotion in a human body is one thing where a big key, a major key that we are supposed to learn while in a human body is emotion what it means, what emotions mean, what they can be used for. And they are tools. Emotions are tools. You experience road rage. You instantly get angry. Well, you're supposed to learn how to control that, to control that. Emotions are tools that stay in the toolbox. And you only use a tool when you need the tool. So that's how emotions are. Most people say they're happy or they're sad. Well, did you know that you can choose what emotion you want to use? You know, if you're sad, it's a, it's, a, it's a thought. It's a thought process. It's something to deal with your brain. You can choose to change that emotion. If you are sad, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder. I was suicidal. I've tried to commit suicide multiple times. First time when I was 17, I tried to shoot myself. And um, it didn't work. It didn't work. And every other time after that, I've tried to overdose. That That's the reason I had such a bad uh, pill problem is because I did not want to be alive anymore. I did not want to deal with this life. I didn't know how. I didn't know how to live. i had been getting high more than half my life. And um, but now, thankfully, no more drugs of any kind. I vape. That's it. I don't drink. I don't uh, smoke cigarettes anymore. I don't smoke marijuana. No prescription pills of any kind. Um, no narcotics, no drugs, no anything. I'm completely sober besides a vape, and I'm trying to stop this. And But it's hard. It is hard, and that's a huge accomplishment that you are sober now besides a vape. Yes. Wow. Yes. Just absolutely amazing. Congratulations to you. 
and and it's it's crazy because you would think after my near-death experience that was caused by drugs i would have stopped using drugs but i didn't stop using drugs after my near-death experience i kept on using drugs and it wasn't to try to it wasn't to try to get back to that near-death experience kind of thing it was i went to work all day during the day and i worked construction i was a carpenter a framer i built houses and at nighttime i talked to people from all over the world and some of these people at nighttime is when uh they they're they're that's their daytime so i would take these drugs to give me energy to go to work during the daytime and then also stay up all night so i could talk to these people so i was even giving people advice while under the influence of these drugs but these drugs were just for the body they did not in any way manipulate my mind because at that time I was in control of it. I was using drugs to manipulate my body and tell my body, you're not tired. You're not hungry. You can do this. You can stay up. You can push through this. And then I was still in control of my mentality. But um, I was told to come back and to take this puzzle apart and learn it to teach it. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm trying, uh, I'm supposed to teach. That's the whole reason that I started a YouTube channel is because I was told my YouTube channel was where I was going to make my biggest impact. And it's not yet, but I did have a YouTube channel that got permanently deleted. And I was starting to make a big impact there. And it, unfortunately I violated their guidelines. Um, so that was my fault. But I have all my other medias, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, where I constantly post, talk about spirituality. I talk about the Bible because I understand. And, and I, I don't mean to get religious because I'm no way, shape, or form religious. And I've told multiple people that I, I do not practice one religion, but I study every every religion because I can see the connections. But a lot of people, they say, this is the true religion. This is God's word. No, this is the true religion. This is God's word. Y'all are not understanding that both of your religion is a creation from God. They're both connected. You are creating the separation and the division just because they don't want to practice your religion you put a Satanist and a Christian in the same room. Are they going to get along? Well, of course they're not. But if they could, if they could create that unity, even though you do have differences, if you could create that unity and work together, could you imagine what this human race could accomplish? That's what I'm trying to teach, is unity of this species. Because something I was shown, there has been massive extinctions on this planet. I mean, you can dig deep. You can look in a history book, watch a movie, dig in the earth if you don't believe me. There's been massive extinction events on this planet that all serve a purpose. They all have a reason and a purpose why that extinction event happened. So it will happen again. It will happen again. But it can be avoided. I was shown that it can be avoided here if we start to work together. Separation is extinction. Unity is evolution. So that's a whole part of it. If we can come together and work together, no matter what your differences is, what your sexuality, your race, your religion, if we can come together and work together and stop hating each other just because we're different, we can evolve. But if we can't, that's a way to show the creator that his creation has reached its peak. It's reached its max. It is time to wipe the slate clean, start over. Mm. Is that why we're witnessing such a collective awakening right now? It's kind of like, uh, here's your moment. What are you going to do with it kind of thing? Yes, I, I really do think so. Uh, that's, that's why I say that I think a lot of people are having th this mass awakening, a lot of near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, or just in the middle of the night, something comes to them. I think that's a big part of this is because 
Twice a year, the Earth passes through something that's called the Torrid Meteor Stream. Twice a year. And it is a massive comet fragment tail that the Earth passes through. 12,600, 12,800 years ago was the Younger Dryas era, where the Earth was bombarded by fragments of a comet. And they had air bursts and land impacts that almost wiped out all of life on this earth. And I mean, not, not some, there were areas that were safe and there were areas that wasn't safe, but there's a reason why it hasn't happened yet. Again, why these comets haven't hit earth is because up until they do, things are going how they're supposed to. And even when that happens, it's all planned. The plan is perfect. So no matter if you think of the plan as perfect being perfection, good things, yeah, that's that's part of the plan. But even the bad things serve a purpose. So you might view that as bad, mass extinction event, but that is not a bad thing. It's a growth. It's part of evolution. One species has to go to make the way for the next. It's the soul that matters. The soul does not die. The physical matter dies. The physical matter dies. But what's controlling it, what's powering it, what's keeping it alive, moving it, it goes on and carries into a next stage, the next stage of evolution. Would you say this is like a, a reset of humanity? It eventually could be. But right now, it's one of these... I've never interfered with y'all before, but I'm going to try to help. I want to try to help. I want, it's really guardians because I believe in guardians and that not everything comes from God and everything is a part of God. But these guardians are trying to help humanity because they're not ready to give up on us as a species yet. Because even before they did decide to come here or did give us these gift of sight they haven't really interfered they have here and there throughout the, the centuries and but when most people say that i oh i talk uh god talks through me most of the time people don't believe that they don't they don't want to believe that or most most of the time when people say i'm visited by angels or i see extraterrestrials people have been here for for I don't know how long, talking about extraterrestrials, uh, talking about angels, talking about God, talking about demons. But some people believe, most don't. The majority of people don't believe. They just believe in their everyday life, their existence. Which, that's fine. That's part of their experience. But it's about time we wake up. It's about time... We unite. How would we wake up for those that haven't had a spiritual experience or a near death experience? How can they wake up? How can they make that connection? You know, I've had I've had several people ask me how to do that. And I'm still trying to figure out a way for someone who has never had that spiritual experience or that awakening. I'm still trying to figure out a way for somebody to have that because uh, so far the only way that I personally know is to do something similar to what triggered my near-death experience is a, a fast and um, if you fast it can cause you to have that spiritual awakening it can trigger it but also if you add not sleeping on top of it it's like a it's like a, a sped up process but that is dangerous. I've told people that the way I did it is dangerous because you run a risk, the possibility of actually dying here. You'll eventually wake up somewhere else, but your body will die here. And that'll be it for you on this earth. You'll have to wake up somewhere else. But uh, I'm not sure yet in, uh, how, to, how to try to wake somebody up. The only thing I could think is maybe try like a psychedelic retreat 
or something similar to that. Um, cause I believe in microdosing also. I, I haven't been able to microdose in probably three years now, but it's something I'm, I really want to go to an ayahuasca, um, retreat. And I'm just curious. I'm just curious what will happen. I'm not positive what will happen, but I want to know, I want to know what was kept from me. And I believe that what was kept for me, the reason it was kept for me is because of me. At that time, I could not understand it or comprehend it because I did not believe in any of this. But since then, I have learned and had learned to evolve. But I don't want to open the channel myself. I want to do it that's guided and somebody that has had this experience before can help me digest what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling. Because just because I see something and feel a certain way about it doesn't mean that's what it means. But yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how I can teach somebody to have this experience. But one thing is I pick up, pick up the Bible. Just, just read the Bible, see how it affects you. If my audience had questions for you, they wanted to reach out or check out your YouTube channel, how can they find you? Uh, my YouTube channel is rather unknown, anonymous, or legend lost 1990. I'm not sure. It's... You can can you email me the link and I'll just include the link in yes. the video description. So can. We, you can check out the video description below to find Chad's uh, YouTube channel link. And then is it okay if they email you? Yes, man. Email, uh, message through Messenger. Uh, it doesn't bother me. You can reach out to me on TikTok, Instagram, anything. I'm open. Anybody who reaches out to me on any platform, I respond to. Wonderful. And if you had one message to leave with the audience from what you had to say today, what would it be? Be your true, authentic self. No matter what, be you do whatever comes natural to you and no matter what hate is pushed towards you greet it with love that with is love. such excellent advice very needed in this in these times thank yes, you so much chad this has been welcome. an honor for me i it was well worth the wait i'll say that yes ma'am thank you Thank you for being here. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you being here and supporting my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing if you enjoy near-death experiences and other spiritually transformative stories. It helps the algorithm know that this information is useful and push it out to more people. And that's the goal to get as many people to know that we are eternal spiritual beings and that we never die. Our bodies might die, but our essence will never die. And I want people to live with less fear. Let's all spread the word, like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that little notification bell so you get all the notifications when my videos post. Thank you for all of your support. I'm sending love to you.